At last we are ready to reap the fruits of our labor and prove the source coding theorem, one of the three major theoretical results of information theory. The three being the source coding theorem, which establishes the best possible compression that one can achieve in some sense. The channel coding theorem, which establishes for a given noisy channel the best possible rate that one can communicate at across that channel and still achieve arbitrarily low error. And the rate distortion theorem, which establishes for a given noisy channel and a given acceptable level of distortion, the best possible rate that one can communicate across the channel and still have distortion under that acceptable level. So in this, in this video, we're going to prove the source coding theorem. So may, let me briefly remind you of a little notation. We're going to be dealing with block codes. And so a block code is a map from X to the K, where X is going to be our source alphabet, to sequences of strings in A star. And these are, so A is our code alphabet. And we have used L to the K in parentheses to denote the expected code word length of this block code. So for each block of symbols, x1 to xk, we encode that block. And each of these code words has a given length. The length of that code word, which we could denote in this way. And this is the expected value of this quantity if we plug in the if we plugged in random variables for our source. And we we're using L subscript K to denote this thing divided by K. Because this L to the K is the expected number of code symbols. That's what the expected length is, the expected number of code symbols per block but each block has K source symbols. So L subscript K is the expected number of code symbols per source symbol. So L subscript K is in, is, is in a certain sense measuring how much compression we're achieving. You can think of L sub, sub, sub K as in some sense the compression ratio. It's not exactly necessarily that because you may be using a different size of source alphabet than code alphabet. The size of X may be different than A. But if X, if they're both, say, binary, if they're both the same, if, if both of these are the same, if they're both, say, binary, then in fact this L subscript K is the compression ratio, the, or rather the expected compression ratio of your algorithm, of your code. So that's the way to think about this. Now, what is the theorem? So let's state the theorem. And it's due to Shannon, of course. And the theorem says, let x1, x2, and so on be a discrete memory list source. And maybe to be precise, I'll, I'll say what that means. So x1, x2, and so on are distributed according to a PMFP. They are IID. They're independent and identically distributed. Each of them is taking values in this set script X, which is our source alphabet. And this, this script X is a countable set, which means that these X's are all discrete random variables. Now, the theorem has two parts. The first part says you can't beat the entropy. You can't beat the entropy the entropy and more formally let's write out what that means so what that means is or what I mean by that is that for any uniquely decodable block code for any uniquely decodable block code and what is a block code a block code is a map here from it's a map C from X to the K to a a star for some K positive So for any uniquely decodable block code, the entropy of P, the entropy of the distribution of each of these random variables in our source is less or equal to L subscript K, is less or equal to the expected encoded length per source symbol, this L sub K here. So it's, it's sort of a lower bound on, on, you can think of this as the compression ratio 
up to some, you know, if the bases are different, so it's up to some constant. All right. So if that's part A, then there must be a part B. And B says, B says, so if A said you can't beat the entropy, B says, but you can get as close as you want. You can get as close as you wish as you want. And more formally, by this I mean, so now I'm going to get a little analytical on you. So I'm going to throw in some epsilons and deltas here. So for any epsilon positive, there exists some number n such that for any k strictly, or doesn't matter, for any k greater than n, there is a prefix code there is a prefix code and it's going to be a prefix block code there's going to be a prefix block code that gets arbitrarily close to the entropy so there is a prefix maybe I'll say block code C from X to the X to the K to encoded strings such that L sub K, it's expected encoded length per symbol, it's, it's sort of compression ratio you can think of it as, is less than the entropy of P, the entropy of one of the source symbols, plus epsilon. So before we saw that we could get within one of the entropy, and this is saying that in fact you can get within epsilon for any positive epsilon. You can get as close as you want. So this is the statement of the source coding theorem. And the, the, two, the two key parts to remember are this sort of formula right here, the entropy of a given of each of the source symbols is a lower bound on your expected encoded length per source symbol. And you can get arbitrarily close that your expected encoded length per symbol can get as close as you want to the entropy. So how are we so what how are we going to prove this? Well, the proof, fortunately, we've done pretty much all the work for the proof. So the proof is going to be a cinch. So let's prove A first. Let's prove A. So A said for any uniquely decodable block code, we have that the entropy is a lower bound. So let's let C be such a uniquely decodable block code. And let's recall what we proved about we had a lower bound on the expected code word length. So, so not L sub K, but we had a lower bound on L to the, to the K on the expected code word length. But these were the, the lengths of the encoded of, of the code words. And there was a code word for each block. So we had a bound on this guy. So we had, we had that the entropy of the block so now right we're we're now encoding blocks at a time so the entropy of a of the distribution of a block is a lower bound on the expected code word length this just follows from remember earlier we had we had the result that the entropy is a lower bound on our expected code word length and that was we could get within one so this is just the left part of this and it's just using you know using this result in the case that our source alphabet is in fact x to the k so we're thinking of x to the k as our source alphabet and the corresponding probability distribution on that source alphabet is just p to the k so we have this lower bound on our expected code word length for our block code and what is our expected code word length well that is just that is just, we can get an expression for that in, in terms of uh, k and L subscript k. And we can get an expression for this. So this equals, this is equal k L subscript k. And the entropy, as we just showed in the previous video, since this is the entropy of a joint distribution of IID random variables, 
it's just k of kiid random variables is just k times the entropy of the individual distributions and so the k cancels and we get that the entropy is a lower bound on the expected code word length on the expect rather the expected encoded length per source symbol and this is exactly what we wanted to prove so that was a cinch and how about b let's do let's do b b is is equally easy now that we have all of our nice results so we have to let epsilon be positive so let's do that for any positive epsilon we have to find an n so that we can get a prefix code with this property well let's let's just consider any old k for now and let's think about what we can do with that k and then then maybe we'll 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 try to pick n later so again thinking about x to the k as just our source alphabet we know that we can choose a prefix code using this part of our bounds we can we can choose a prefix code on x to the k that is within one of the entropy for which the expected code word length is within one so we have this l to the k is less than the entropy and the, the entropy now it's the distribution of those k those k source symbols the entropy of the block plus one so we know we, we can we can choose so i can say you know you know choose so choose c prefix such that its expected code word length satisfies this we know we can do that and now what is this well this is just this is just k times just like here k times l subscript k and over here the entropy just like before we can use the same thing k times the entropy of p plus one and now when, just like before we're going to divide by k so we get so we get so we divide by k and this implies l sub k is strictly less than the entropy of p plus one over k and now you can see the result so we needed to choose n so that for any k greater than n we can get this this inequality here and in order to do that all we need is we need one over k less than epsilon because if one over k is less than epsilon then of course this this is less than the entropy of p plus epsilon so we just you know choose n so that one over n so choose n so that one over n is less than epsilon and then as long as k is greater than n then one over k will also be less than epsilon and we have the result so that is the proof easy now that we've done all we've done already done all the hard work so the proof was easy so this proves the source coding theorem which tells us that you can't beat the entropy you, you know you're you're uniquely for any uniquely decodable block code you you you're 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 you you're never going to get better than the entropy and your expected encoded length per source symbol but you can get as close as you want and now i'd like to make clear that this is mainly a theoretical result because block coding if you're if you're just going to use something simple like like uh you know uh like shannon coding to choose your prefix code like we've done so far and or in general for any block code you're, you're going to have to have a uh, a code word for every sequence x1 to xk but when k is getting large that's the size of this set the size of this set right here is getting exponentially large and so for a, a sort of naive approach to to having a block code even though in theory you can get as close as you want to the entropy and you can as a computational as a practical matter your the the efficiency and not in terms of encoding but the efficiency in terms of computation 
of your code is just going to become exorbitant. So while it is true that you can get as close as you wish in terms of the the encoding the the efficiency or the, the compression that you achieve as a practical matter this is not the end of the story as a practical matter there is still work to do in order to you know we still have work to do in order to figure out how we're going to efficiently get close to this when we're trying to encode long sequences of things how we can get, I mean, in terms of computational efficiency, I'm using efficiency in two different ways. How we can, how we can tractably and practically, uh, as a computational matter, get, get a good compression rate.